Another year has passed and as usual that means we release a new update guide on glitch building for No Man's Sky. While not much has changed in the world of glitch building, there are a few new techniques and of course we have a new platform added to the family so the key guide will now also include the switch. Apart from that, I hope to simplify and make everything as clear as possible for aspiring glitch builders. Before we start with the more challenging techniques, we'll cover two distinct methods that don't involve any actual glitch building but can deliver some amazing results. The first technique is used for blending parts together and is relatively straightforward. The second technique we refer to as the tether glitch, though it's not a real glitch, Using this tethering method, you can create some truly remarkable effects. And it serves as the foundation for one of the glitches featured later in this guide. For the first technique, I like to work with the glass floor as foundation, as that will give you a better view of what you're doing. Once you have a glass floor in place, enable the build camera and move underneath the glass floor. In this example, I will be using a short range teleporter, as this technique is a great way to build a teleporter bridge. Now tilt your camera upwards until you can go no further. This will lock your cursor in place and produce the best blended results. Now if you want your cursor at a specific spot, like the center of a floor, you will have to move your camera around a bit until that locked position is in place. Now the teleporter is currently red stated and cannot be built, but if you enable free placement, you can see it turns green. Now you can rotate and place the teleporter in whatever direction you like. Don't move the camera yet, but be sure to keep the cursor locked in the same spot. Another teleporter should now have shown up in the meantime, also green stated. You can now rotate that teleporter in the direction you need and place it again. This teleporter now perfectly merges into the other one and you can keep on doing this however much you like. The teleporter is of course just the beginning and can be used for many other applications, be it by merging glass into arch walls or creating sculptures like the hypnosphere I built some time ago. You can rotate your pieces in different orientations and create some really amazing designs all without a single glitch building technique. Be aware this of course only works with the parts that do not hug the surface, so parts like the hexagon cabinet or a lap lamp will not work like this. The next non glitch build technique is the tether glitch. This technique allows you to literally anchor a part to a position and use it as a pivot point. To begin you can select any building part you like to work with. Once you have the building part in hand, you can toggle over to the wire and then place that wire where your pivot point should meet the ground or any other surface. Toggling off the wire now will return the selected building part and it will be anchored on the position you placed your wire. If by any chance your part shows red stated, you can always enable the free placement to make it buildable. By the way, you can still scale this tethered part as well. And take note of this as this technique is also the basis of another glitch building technique we're going to be checking out in a bit. In the meantime, you might also have noticed there is a weird color glitch when you're using the wire. As you can see here, the building parts are going into a certain green or purple. Colors we cannot use in the color menu, but also we cannot duplicate them. We cannot use them as like a way to color our parts uniquely. It's more of a quirky bug than actually a feature we can use for glitch building. All right, let us now jump over to the actual glitch building. Now, what is glitch building? Glitch building means you are taking advantage of the delay between your controls and the game registering those inputs. Because of that delay, you can place building parts in positions where the game generally would not allow you to. Now we can divide glitch building into three categories. There are adjacency based glitches, there are wire based glitches and cache based glitches. I will be going over most of these techniques and skip the ones that are now rather obsolete. Now before we jump into this, I would like to emphasize that this can take some time for you to master. So take your time and take a break when you're feeling getting frustrated. For each technique, you will be using combinations of two keys. Take note that during this tutorial, I will be using terms like pressing first or giving priority to. This is because there is a slight delay between those buttons, but the timing is so minuscule, it will feel as if you're pressing them at the same time. Still, if you have some issues, then try to play around a bit with the delay between the buttons to see what works best for you. In the end, it should always feel as if you're pressing them at the same time, so the delay is really, really small. Let us go into the first category, which is adjacency glitches. And let us begin with the basic adjacency glitch, the OG, the original glitch. As the name states, this glitch uses the adjacent parts in the menu as a way to place their neighboring part. However, since Frontiers, it is only possible to glitch to the right side of the menu. This means we can use the large alloy floor to glitch the small floor in place, or use the small floor to glitch in the triangle, and so on. Or you could use the large landing pad 
and replace it with the alternative landing pad, and these are just a few examples. Now, how do you perform an adjacent glitch? Well, let's begin with this large floor panel, which we'll be using to glitch in the neighboring part, the small panel. So, select the large floor and snap it in place where you want the small panel to end up. To complete an adjacent glitch, we will need to press two buttons. The first button will be the one that cycles from the large floor to the small floor, and the second button will be the one that we use to place the part. Because of this button combination, the game will be building the small floor in the center of where the large floor would have been built. If you look at your build bar on your screen, you should see all the buttons you need to press for cycle and build. But I will also show the combination in the bottom left corner for each platform, and I will do this for every technique. So, once again, we will be pressing the buttons for cycle part and build part, with a slight priority to cycle part. When done successfully, you can now see the small floor has taken the place of the large floor, and it has been built perfectly center of where the large floor would have been built. Some other examples could be replacing the large stair with a small stair, in case you wanted to have it nice and central, or you can create a sequence of adjacency glitches to build another part in the center of the floor. To explain this better, let us say you would like this emergency heater in the center of the large floor. Let me quickly duplicate the large floor here and use the adjacency glitch to build a small floor instead. Now snap another small floor on the side and remove the small floor in the center. Open up the build menu again and next to the emergency heater you will find the light floor. Select that one and snap that in the place where the small floor was. Complete another adjacency glitch and that will now place the emergency heater perfectly center. These are a few ways to use the adjacency glitch. There are going to be better techniques to achieve this without all these workarounds, but as you might gradually be growing into this, you could use this technique for a while until you mastered the other ones. Still, this is not the only way you could use the adjacency glitch, as this glitch also has led to another technique, which is the scale glitch. And as you probably guessed, it is the combination of scaling a part and glitching to an adjacent piece. As an example, let us take a part that is naturally not scalable like this light box. As you can see, it is not possible to scale up. But if you look in the build menu, next to the light box is the illuminated sign, which is scalable. So let us select the sign and scale it up to its max size. Once it's fully scaled, we can now do an adjacency glitch. That will replace the illuminated sign with the light box, but retain the same size, which results in a massive light box. As you can see compared with the original size. And of course you can do this also smaller. Just select the illuminated sign again, scale it all the way down and do another adjacency glitch. And there you go, both sizes of the spectrum. Now you might have noticed that the electrical connection is not showing on the scaled up light box and this will happen a lot on most of the scaled up parts. There are a few techniques you can do to connect wires to them and I even made some guides about it but each connector is different and causes it to be fickle to create one simple technique for this. Therefore you will have to do a lot of experimenting yourself to get the connections to work. So this is the scale glitch, which is directly linked to the adjacency glitch, which means you can only scale up parts that are next to another scalable part or you have to continue the glitches in sequence. For example, scale up the light box, then use the scaled up light box to scale up the light floor and so on. But this is pretty limiting and time consuming and there are better techniques for this, which we'll check later on. Let us move on to the next category, wire glitching. And we can begin with the basic wire glitch. While the basic wire glitch was pretty simple back in the day, in the recent year it has become way more versatile and taken away the need for some other later discovered wire glitches. But let's keep that for later and let me show you the basis of a wire glitch. To show you the extent of this glitch, I will begin with selecting a base part that is not possible to build in regular circumstances. For example, the marine shelter. As you can see, the game lets me know I need to build this underwater. Even if I enable free placement, the game still does not allow me to build it. So with the marine shelter selected, we can now toggle to the wire. Notice that it's possible to rotate the wire, which means that when you rotate the wire and do the glitch, the part will also follow the direction of the wire. Okay. So we have the part selected and we toggle to the wire. Now we're going to follow a similar strategy as the adjacency glitch, but instead of cycle and building, we will toggle the wire and build. We want the game to believe we're going to place this green stated wire, but while it does that, we switch back to the building part, which will result in the selected part being built. So we press two buttons, toggle wire and build part, with again a slight priority to toggle wire. And there we go, the marine shelter has been built instead. 
The wire glitch is of course not limited to the floor only. We can use it on the walls, we can use it on any other surfaces and also rotating the wire to get the results we want. In this example I will use a flag to show the results of that. So let us just wire glitch one at the default orientation and then the next one we do at 45 degrees and another one we do at 90 degrees. So as you can see by rotating the wire prior to the glitch we can control the direction of our part before it will be placed. A quick but important note here. The technique you just learned, pressing the toggle wire and building, is going to be a very recurring technique from now on. If you get the hang of this technique, many of the other following techniques will be pretty easy to learn. The first one on that list will be the reverse wire glitch, which the name should already make it pretty clear. Instead of using the wire to glitch a part, you use a part to glitch a wire. This technique is going to be very important for you if you want to create perfect glitch points at a fixed position, build circles, set up building grids and so on. While the result is different, the technique is just the same as we did a wire glitch. We just start from a different situation. So let's quickly duplicate this floor here, snap it against here, and now we simply press the same button sequence as we would do a wire glitch. Toggle wire and build. And there we go. We now replace the floor with the wire connector perfectly centered on where the floor was snapped. However, we are still stuck with the other end of the wire. And while we can now place the other end of the wire on the surface of this floor, the results will be pretty unsatisfying when glitching on that connector. By the way, you can wire glitch your parts on existing connectors. This used to be called blender glitch, as the connector can be used to glitch several parts in one position. But as of late, I've simply been referring this all into one technique, which is the wire glitch. Especially as the wire now can be free placed and rotated, both the blender and the banjo glitch are pretty obsolete now. If you would like to learn more about the directionality of the wire, then I would advise you to check out my guide about controlling the wire, which I will link in the description. Going back to the reverse wire glitch, what we want to achieve is to have a wire or a wire connector perfectly level and straight to work on. Once you understand the basics of that, you can always experiment more with angles and tilts to expand your building skills even further. So my preferred method to obtain that perfect level wire is to use a garage door at least while working with floors. As you can see, the garage door has a connector in the center, which is facing upwards. And because it's in the center of the wall, it's also on the center of the floor. So let us duplicate another floor, snap it right here, and then reverse wire glitch it. And then we snap the other end of the connector to the garage door. This now will result in this connector being perfectly straight, at least in this axis. Of course, in this axis, the connector is not straight which does not mean it's useless, but not handy for what we want to do right now. So, to get a straight and level wire, we need to follow the axis where the wire is directed. In this example, it means we need to do another reverse wire glitch from here, from this floor, and connect it to this connector right here. If you would now wire glitch a floor on this, it will be perfectly level following the other floors. And that is because we followed this axis. Not this one here. To show you the difference, let us do the same reverse wire glitch, but now from this position to the wire here. And you will notice that the connector is no longer level, but following the angle of the wire that we just connected to. And if we would glitch a floor on that connector, you will now see it will follow the same direction of that wire there. So this is why you want to prepare yourself a level wire, by following the same axis of the wire. Of course you will be able to use these angles to your advantage later on if you wish to make angled windows, walkways and so on. If you recall us glitching the heater in the center of the floor by using the adjacency glitch, now we can simply select the emergency heater and glitch it on the connector of the floor with the same results. Plus, the advantage of this is that you can keep using the same connector to glitch parts on, so you can blend and merge them together and create something entirely different and unique. Oh, I should also mention that if you build in other game modes that require resources to build, the wire glitch will build your parts even if you do not have the resources at hand. Which is why the wire glitch also has become known as the golden glitch. Alright, we have reached the final category, which is the cache glitches. Cache glitching is a powerful tool for experienced builders. It allows them to store pieces from the build menu in their game's memory and then use them when needed. Cash glitching found its origin in an older technique which was named the reverse adjacency glitch, though has since been replaced by more effective techniques such as the ultimate scaling glitch. Although less prevalent today, this glitch still offers plenty of practical applications and should not be overlooked. So let's take some time to cover it. 
Remember we talked about the tether glitch? This is where we will be using it. So open up the build menu and select a scalable building part. The wall light will do just fine. With the part selected, toggle to the wire. Place the wire and stretch the wire out over the floor. Now toggle back to the wall light and scale it up to its maximum size. You can of course also scale it down or whatever size in between you need. Once you have the scale you wish, you can now do a glitch technique you already learned, the wire glitch. As I said, this key combination now returns a lot. After pressing the key combination, the wire will now be placed instead while retaining the scale of the wall light. Let me place an original wire next to it for comparison. And of course you can also create a tiny wire by scaling your wall light completely down. These scaled wires are the foundation of the ultimate scaling glitch. However, not long after the discovery of this glitch, another glitch was born from this, the universal adjacency glitch. Both these techniques have the same method of completing it, they just have a different origin point, which makes them both useful in different situations. So before showing you how to complete these glitches, let me show you how to set up the universal adjacency. So open up your building menu and select a scalable part. I will be using the emergency heater. And I will be building three of them in different sizes. I will scale one up to its maximum size, one to its minimum size and one regular one. So now we have three parts that are the same as the wire. This maxed up heater is the same as the size of this wire, the regular heater is the normal wire and the small heater is the tiny wire. So the wires are the foundation for the ultimate scaling glitch, the heaters will be the foundation for the universal adjacency glitch. But in the end the method to complete them is both the same. But because of the applications you will understand why we differentiate between both. Ok, open up your build menu and select a building piece that is not scalable. I will be taking this stone wall here as it's pretty obvious it's not scalable. And we're going to be storing it into our cache. As usual, to complete a glitch we need to press a combination of two buttons. In this case we need to press the button for toggle wire and the button for toggle edit build. Once again there will be a slight priority to toggle wire. Alright, the part is now stored in my cache. You can double check if you succeeded by first of all looking at the building parts you are aiming at, which should be lighting up blue. The second check should be on your build bar, which should now have swap part and place the wire as the first options. In the end you want to be able to duplicate a part. Of course, because we want to scale up the cached part, we will be duplicating a scaled piece. For the ultimate scaling glitch, we duplicate one of the wires. And as you can see, the connector is retaining the size of the wire we just duplicated. And now we will do once again a wire glitch. So press the buttons for toggle wire and build. When done right, you should now have a massively scaled up wall instead. Let me place the original size for comparison. In the meantime take note that you can only scale your building parts up to maximum of 3. There are no techniques yet to resize anything larger than that. Scaling down has a minimum of 4 times smaller. Now we're going to use the emergency heater as the basis, but use the same key combinations as before. So store the wall in your cache, duplicate the tiny emergency heater this time, which is the same size as the small wire. Move over here and do another wire glitch. And there we go, a tiny wall. Now you might be wondering why we differentiate between the two glitches even if they use the same technique. This is because the ultimate scaling glitch is only used for that, scaling up parts, while the universal adjacency has way more applications apart from scaling. Ok, but why would you want to use wires as a foundation then if you could use building parts instead? Well, the advantage of the wire is that you can have control over its orientation and it will also follow any surface. To demonstrate, let me quickly build a wall here and let's take a half wall as a part we want to scale. We begin as usual by storing the piece into our cache. Let us duplicate the wire and as you can see the wire will follow the surface of the wall, which means I will be able to wire glitch it against the wall. I still also can still rotate the wire connector before so I can control the direction of my glitch. But I can also tether glitch with this scaled wire. Simply place the wire, stretch it out and now when I do a wire glitch the part will follow the direction of the wire and also retain the size. Alright, that were the two applications to scale building parts, but the universal adjacency glitch is way more than that. In fact, the universal adjacency glitch is one of my favorite techniques, as it allows you to replace any part with any other part. To make this make more sense, let me demonstrate with the emergency heater once again. And to keep the theme, the aim is to glitch the emergency heater in the center of this floor. 
Now you can either delete the floor or simply use the move function, both will work for the universal adjacency glitch. So let us store the heater in our cache. And now we're going to move this floor instead of deleting and duplicating. Just leave the green stated floor in place and complete a wire glitch. That is now going to replace this floor with the heater in my cache. And now we can duplicate the floor again, snap it in place and you can see the heater is now merged in the center of the floor. But it doesn't end here, you can remove the floor again and keep on glitching other parts using the universal adjacency, for example this corner cap. And you can glitch another one in by rotating the floor and changing the direction. And these are just a few minor examples of how you can use the universal adjacency for building in No Man's Sky. Ok, we have finally reached the last glitch of this video, which is the cash pin glitch. This glitch will allow you to build parts that are not even in your building menu. For example, freighter parts in your planetary base or vice versa. Now, there is much to be prepared and learned about how to deal with this technique and I did make a more in-depth guide about it, which you can find in the description below. Today, I only want to show you the basics of this technique so you can learn the key combinations. Alright, open up your options menu and select the catalog and guide tab. Then choose building parts on that page and that will open up a catalog of all the building parts you learned and unlocked. One of the subcategories will be named freighter construction. And there you will find all the basic rooms and build parts for your freighter, at least the ones you unlocked. Now Hello Games doesn't allow you to build any of these in your base, but we still want to. So we're going to select this exterior platform here and if you look at the bottom of the pop-up window it says pin formula. Now this is normally used for you to get a little submission that shows you the resources you need to collect before you can build the part. But this action also has some side effects. So let me select the exterior platform and pin it. That will now add this to our secondary missions which will, when you leave the menu, also show up in the bottom right corner of your screen. So what we want to do now is go into our building menu. So press the button to enter the menu. Once that is opened, we close the menu again by pressing the button for edit parts. Now enable the build camera and move towards the location you prepared for the glitch. Currently we have the option to duplicate, but we don't want to duplicate anything yet. So let us press the button once again to toggle edit build. And now you can see the information screen popping up again on the right. Still, by judging the build beam from our character and the build button in our build bar, we cannot build it. So we need to trick the game. In this example we will be using the universal adjacency for it. So simply press the buttons to store this invisible platform in your cache. And now we duplicate this floor right here, snap it against here and execute a wire glitch. And there we go, our very first freighter walkway. Now there is no way to duplicate this and glitch more of them again. You will need to move back and forth a lot between the catalog and build menu during this. Still, there are ways to simplify and reduce the work, such as by setting up your area or preparing a wire grid. Once again, more of that you can learn in the guide that is linked in the description. And here we finally are. These were all the glitch techniques currently known and still useful for the year 2023. I hope this guide gave you a good overview of what each of them are and also helps out the new players coming over from Switch. Once again, if you're completely new to this and you're just beginning to learn glitch building, take your time and regular breaks when frustration hits. It can be daunting, but once you get the rhythm of it, so many possibilities will open up for you. If you enjoyed this guide, then please let me know in the comments and by pressing that thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching. This was Beeblebum. Goodbye for now.